Hello, my name is Bogdana Neamțu and this is module number 4, Social Sustainability. In this course, we are going to talk about the needs of communities, how we are conducting a needs assessment and about an innovative form of asset-based development where instead of needs of a community, we are rather focusing on the asset that community has. Please think about the fact that, similar to individuals, most communities encounter different problems and have needs. If we are thinking about various communities, the communities you guys are coming from, you will realize that especially poor or distressed communities are used to see development as being dependent upon the provision of infrastructures and services by the government. We very often hear the fact that a certain community cannot develop because it doesn't have good roads or is not very well connected to the outside world. While this is true, we often forget that development can be fostered by activating assets within the local community. These assets exist despite of the existing problems. I would suggest that any serious intervention in the community, irrespective of whether it is carried out by governments or NGOs, must be based on on an analysis of the community. But of course, first, we need to know how we define a community. You could either go to a very general literature on communities, which is accessible to everybody, or you can go to the more sophisticated literature on sociology. Common sense tells us that a community can be defined as the people in a given geographical location. We can think of communities as being placed at a smaller or larger geographical scale. We can think about a community in terms of a neighborhood or a housing project. We also think of communities as groups of people that share something in common. It is not unusual to have communities defined in terms of race, economic ties, religion, culture, or ethnicity. Of course, that these various communities often overlap. As I was telling you, the idea of what communities are have preoccupied scholars in various disciplines, and mainly sociology, for a very long uh, time. On this slide, I included a, de a definition by a German sociologist and philosopher, Ferdinand Antonius. He was a major contributor to sociological theory, and he was mainly known for the distinction between two types of social group, Gemeinschaft, and Gesellschaft. These concepts are often not translated in other languages because translation is difficult. Gemeinschaft refers to groupings of people based on feelings of togetherness or on mutual bonds. Gesellschaft is often translated as society and it can be regarded as opposite to Gemeinschaft and it refers to groups that are sustained by being instrumental for, the, for their members' individual aims and goals. Such organizations or communities would be like corporations, states or voluntary associations. Another scholar, Max Weber, is also a German sociologist, philosopher, and legal scholar. 
he made a distinction between community and other forms of human associativity. Associativity is seen as a form of social organization based only on common interest and manifesting itself through rational action exchanging and exchanges expressing private interest. On the other hand, you have community, which is oriented toward action capable of self-organization within which relationships among individuals are based on the conscious of traditional or subjective affective belonging, without excluding, however, external influences. Perhaps uh, you will think that the two definitions by sociologists are very complicated and abstract. You are probably right, and this is why I included a more applied definition by a scholar in community development, James Mercer, where he defines community as a functional grouping of individuals who live in a geographical space at a certain moment in time, have a common culture, all arranged into a social structure, and acknowledge a conscience of their unique character together with their separate group identity. Again, I'm going back to the definitions of community offered by the two German sociologists, and you can see that even more recent definitions are still adapting or adopting certain elements from um, sociology. I think it will be the easiest for you to look at some of the elements that I listed on slide 7 for you, because these are usually the elements considered when we are trying to understand the community. We have physical aspects and infrastructures, but then we have also the demographics of that community, the history, community leaders, which can be formal and informal, we have again the community culture, which can be formal and informal. We have existing groups, existing institutions, government and politics, social structure, attitude and values. All these elements are important and they are interrelated. As I was telling you in the beginning of our presentation, it is important when we are discussing about communities. How do we understand the needs of a community? What kind of methods or tools are we employing? Of course, we will again start by defining needs in the context of a community. They have needs have been defined as the gap between what a situation is and what it should be. In this sense, examining needs helps us to discover what is lacking and points us in the direction of future improvement. I want you to keep in mind one name, which is uh, Robert Kaufman, who is considered the father of needs assessment because he was the first to develop a model for determining needs defined as a gap in results. You can see um, listed on the slide a difference or a difference that Kaufman is operating between needs described as a noun and needs described at a ver as a verb. When need is used at the, at the noun, as a noun, it refers to a gap in results and consequences, not a gap in resources or methods. This is important because future intervention models will also look at how we can use assets in order to develop communities.
please look at a definition of needs assessment, which is basically a methodology which seeks to gather accurate information representative of the needs of a community. It's important to keep in mind that assessments should be performed prior to taking action and are used to determine current situations and identify issues for action. Um, when we are doing strategic planning in communities, needs assessment is an essential step. The historical roots of needs assessment mirror those of the formalized strategic planning that was popular in the 1960s. However, it was only in recent years that non-profit organizations have taken advantage of strategic planning and needs assessment processes. As I was telling you, it's not only the needs that count. Of course, it is important to understand what challenges, what problems, what's missing from a community, what's keeping it from developing the way it wants. However, needs are only part of the story. Communities also have assets. Kratzman and McKnight made it clear in 1993 that assessing only needs is not enough. It results in an incomplete picture of a community. An assessment should also be conducted through the lens, through the lens of strength so that community residents can articulate what they perceive as the assets of their community. There are several arguments in favor of why conducting a community assessment. I will only um, share with you a couple of them, which are also listed on the PowerPoint slides. There is increased understanding within the community about its needs, why they exist, and why it is important for the needs to be addressed. Community members have the opportunity to share how the needs impact the quality of life for the larger community. Community engagement is increased because members from different parts of the community are included in discussions about needs, assets, and the community's response. The community's strengths as well as weaknesses are identified during this process. In the end, there is an inventory of the resources currently available within the community that can be leveraged to improve the quality of life for its community members. Also, communities, when they are conducting a community assessment, they identify the asset gaps that exist in their communities Community members have an increased awareness of how they can contribute to their community's assets. You can identify community organizations and how they can use information about community needs to assess their service delivery priorities. Following such a process, there will be data for making decisions about the actions that can be taken to address community needs and how to use the available assets. And finally, data can be used to inform strategic planning, priority setting, program outcomes, and program improvements. Who can conduct community assessment? Basically, any interested stakeholder may at a certain point be interested in having or obtaining data from a community assessment. I will refer to the reasons why municipalities or local governments should conduct such a community assessment. If you are a municipality, a community needs assessment will provide you with valuable information that could be used in a variety of ways. You can justify grants that you are giving, you can design new local programs and initiatives, 
and you can promote collaboration among local ag agencies and businesses. Also, once you are done with the community needs assessment, the results of this process can provide you with good information about what services are needed in the community. Also about how the citizens of your community will present view present services and what are their recommendations for further improvements. <coughs> when we are talking about needs assessment and community assessment, we need to be aware that there are certain principles that need to be taken into account. Otherwise, the entire process may be biased and you may end up with um, stakeholders in the community that no longer believe in this process. I would say that it's important to value the participation from diverse constituencies. Even if you as a municipality or organization need to make additional efforts to get input from more, um, from more stakeholders, you are supposed to use multiple methods. Also, you have to encourage civil participation as well as technical elements. It is important for everybody conducting a needs assessment to keep the assessment realistic. Also, during this process, you need to value asset building. On slide 15, I have um, listed three important phases in the process of needs assessment at community level. Also, each of the phase has specific and critical steps that needs to be followed. We have three phases, which are pre-assessment, assessment and post-assessment. I would suggest you not to ignore either pre-assessment or post-assessment because they are equally important as the assessment itself. If you go directly into the assessment phase, you may not know what's the purpose for your assessment, what exactly are you trying to discover and what are your goals ob or objectives. If you skip the post-assessment phase, you won't have a proper dissemination of your results and mainly your data will not be shared with other important stakeholders in the community. The, methodolo the methodological part in a needs assessment is extremely important. There are a variety of methods and tools and strategies available out there, but I think that you need to make a distinction about, among common methods and more innovative ones, and to understand that the type of methods you use depends not only on the type of problems you have, but also on your type of expertise and familiarity with the methods. Among the common methods I would mention using existing data, interviews, community forums, observation, content analysis, and case studies. Among the innovative methods, I would include creative assessments such as storytelling, role play, dramatization, simulations, and modeling. Please be careful not to mistake needs assessment for other type of strategies that also have an evaluative function. Needs assessment should not be mistaken for evaluation. Needs assessment is proactive. Evaluation in most cases is reactive after the fact. Both look at gaps in results and consequences, but one attempts to fill the gaps before starting intervention 
and the other looks at the gaps that have been successfully addressed. There are, however, situations when needs assessment can be part of program evaluation, like a preliminary step. Please take a closer look at the slides 18 and slide 19, where I have included several examples of assessment and how they were conducting and how they were conducted in real situations. These examples are based on the literature and discuss in depth exactly how the assessment was done with the methodology used as well as the groups targeted. Uh, it is important to, to look especially at the last column in the table which shows you how the results were used once they were obtained. I will now address an issue which is extremely important namely asset-based community development. In the beginning of my presentation, but also throughout my presentation, I was alluding to the fact that assets are equally important as needs. Asset-based community development, or ABCD, how it's called in the literature, requires you to recognize assets in a community as an important stage because a specific type of development can be based on it. ABCD was developed in the 1990s and it implies that an extensive period of time is spent in identifying the assets of individuals, associations and the institutions before they are mobilized to work together to build on the, and they, to build on the identified assets. I will not focus too much on the definitions of ABCD because it is rather because they are rather straightforward. I would just say that ABCD is defined as an approach based on the principle of identifying and mobilizing individual and community assets rather than focusing on problems and needs. I would like you to understand that again we are witnessing a shift from the social service model which is in line with the traditional notions of patronage and charity to a community building model in which productive interaction and capacity building exercising spawn a sense of ownership and secure sustainability this is extremely important especially when we are talking about poor and disadvantaged communities, which are mostly used to be receivers of social services without paying too much attention to the fact that even though they are poor, they might still have something valuable to offer. On this slide, I have included a table which looks at the differences between the social service model and the community building model. Please go over each of the items and see which are the main differences. If you start from top, you will see that one focuses on needs while the other focuses on assets. One responds to problems, the other builds from opportunities. They are completely different because the philosophy underlying these two models is completely different.
please try to think about the community you come from and to try to identify what kind of assets a city or a rural village can have. We can have individuals as assets. Perhaps you are all aware of very creative and smart residents in your community who can make a difference. Then, at the next level, we have associations. These are small informal groups of people which are working with a common interest. They are a very valuable asset in a community. Please do not ignore them. You also have institutions. As opposed to associations where most people are volunteers, institutions are paid group of people who generally are professionals with expertise in a certain area. They include government agencies and private businesses, as well as schools, for example. Again, they are very valuable resources. You have physical assets. Land, for example, can be a very valuable asset. Natural resources can also be valuable assets. And then a fifth type of asset include connections. Connections are more abstract than physical assets, of course, but they are equally important because very often if individuals or associations in a community are, ve are well connected, this can solve a lot of problems and it can facilitate access to outside or external resources. In conclusion, I would say that no matter whether you are a local government or an NGO, when you are trying to develop local communities, it is important to consider both needs and assets. There are a variety of types of instruments out there used to conduct community assessments or needs assessments. There is an innovative way to develop communities and this is asset-based community development or ABCD. Hello 